Welcome back, Achievers, to your Easy Achievers Gaming Podcast for the week of April 14th. I'm one of your hosts, Elijah, sitting across me digitally, as always. Alex, how are you? Good, good morning. It's not morning, but good morning. It's, good morning, it's, it's, it's morning in my mind. Mm. I don't like, know what you know, that means. How are you like, doing? Do you do you know like when you you know when you wake up, you're like, I got a lot of things to do, and okay. then once you get everything you got to do, like cleaning things like that, you sit down and you're like, was I just on autopilot all morning? Mm. Like now I can actually just like, like I like I just woke up. I yeah, I definitely understand. Morning. You have like chores that are set up, and you're like, oh, I need these things done. You do them, mm-hmm. and then you kind of come back into consciousness. Like I guess I did them. I guess I'll go do yeah. my own thing now, and then you yeah. go do your own thing. You never answered my question. How are you? Oh, no, I said I'm good. Oh, okay. All right. That's it. Moving on. Thank you so yeah. much for joining us today. We are the Easy Choose Game Cost. Coming to you every single Friday with the news you think you should know about. Now, we love you. And you love us. And we're very much, our love language is, uh, what's the one? Um, acts of uh, consideration or something like that. Like, yeah. Like physical physical acts. So our physical act for you to show us your love is of course heading over to YouTube as of you're listening to currently or a podcast service if you're listening to it currently and you give us a like or your five star reviews. Comment literally interacting in any way. Helps us out immensely if you want to tweet at us to get on to the show. You can either tweet or patreon.com slash achievers is where you go. You can donate some money. Get the list of tiers there. And then you can Ask questions, get on the show, things of that nature. Thank you so much again for clicking on the video. Now, Alex, I like to start the show just like I do every week with a single question. My question is, of course, what have you been playing? Hmm. So after, let's see, we we play a little bit of Tiny Tina's. We need to get back to that. We do. Yeah. Um, not surprised at all. I went back to Dark Souls. No, no one saw that coming. Yeah, right. And it's I beat that in 26 hours. It said. So I mean, I don't know if that's short, long. I don't know. <laughs> um, Medium. now I'm playing Dark. Yeah, and then I kind of got you into it. You you yeah. started Dark Souls three, and then I think you so, said you started Dark Souls one. So I started Dark Souls three. Okay, killed a couple bosses, stopped, yeah. and went. You know what? First off, I have a problem. I'll admit it here on the show right now. I have an achievement problem. All right. Oh, yeah. When I'm not getting when- achievements in a game, it does feel like, frankly, I'm wasting my time. So <laughs> what I did was <laughs> let me get some achievements to not only play a game, but also scratch the achievement itch. So I mm-hmm. ran over to Dark Souls 1, the original, the remaster that came out uh, yeah. not too long ago, 2018, I want to say. And I'm playing through that. I yeah. have killed, for people who know the game, Quaylog. Sounds a lot like Quaaludes. Don't know what's up with the name, but she's she's dead. I murdered her. Uh, mm-hmm. Rung the second bell of awakening. Now I'm going to head out and probably go fight Ren. I think his name is. Maybe I'll go do Artarius. I don't know which one I'm gonna do yet, but I'll figure it out. Dark Souls One yeah. is very much a just do what you want. You want to go do Blight Town early in the game? Go ahead. You know, you want to go do? You know, it's gonna suck, but you can definitely do it. Yeah. Uh, but I'm slowly crawling through Dark Souls 1 again. I hope to finish it over the weekend because I actually want to play Nobody Saves the World. It's a game mm. I've been kind of pushing on and on and on in favor of other games, but I do want to try it out. It's a fantastic game. I think it recently launched on PlayStation, but it's been on Xbox for a few months. Got it's it. actually on Game Pass, and I want to play it. It looks awesome. The actual it gameplay look looks cool. really fun. Uh, the art style is very nice. I do not know what the game is about, which is exciting. No one's kind of spoiled it, which is nice. So mm-hmm. I'm excited to dig my teeth into that. But really, Alex, to be honest with you, uh, I, I, I probably not going to be playing too many games. There's not much coming out. So this is the time yeah. to go into the backlog, maybe watch yep. some TV shows or movies that you skipped out on. I'm actually going to be going to the latter route of watching some TV shows and movies that I skipped out on because of video games. Uh, for instance, yep. I'm watching Peacekeeper, which is... Okay. Great TV show over on HBO. Fantastic. I love it. I think I'm mm-hmm. on episode three. Hilarious. My favorite character is the Eagle. 
you will know him <laughs> if you watch the show. Uh, I love that. I have some plans on watching a couple movies. I really want to watch. I don't know if you heard about this, Alex. I'm I'm probably gonna mess up the the name. Everything, okay. everywhere, all at once. I think is what it's called. And it's a movie that just came out. All I've heard is it's awesome, and I have no idea what it is. But, peop- but people that I respect with movies are screaming to watch it. So I'm like, okay, well, okay. maybe I should take a second and watch oh, it. This one. I have, I have no idea what this movie is. So gotcha. Yeah, I, me, saw, but... I saw a commercial about this, and it has that really? chick. And it I have not like... seen anything. I have absolutely seen anything? zero. No, nothing. I haven't even seen a picture, surprisingly. Oh really? You know, no. I did. I, I saw a commercial. No, I have no idea what this is. So I'm excited to go into it. Do you it. want to know what I remember from the commercial? No. Okay. Cool. I want to go into this as as blind as possible because I really have Got just. It. it reminds me of when I watched um. Hmm. What was the movie called? There was a movie that I came into that I was completely blind, and I was like, "Wow, I I couldn't guess what this was about." Hmm. Not important, but I love doing that where I just because I'm not in the movie world. So yeah. whenever I hear a good movie, I generally have no idea what it's about. Uh, also, um, April, yeah. I want to say April 18th, The Batman is on HBO Max. Yep. I skipped out on theaters because, frankly, all of the movie theaters around me are fucking Fuck. terrible. Yeah. Just yep. ch- achievers. They're terrible. Just terrible. So I, I just, I refuse to go to them now. I've just given up. I've just, mm-hmm. it's, it's over. So I, I, I'm either going to watch it at home or I'm going to drive very far into a big city that's close to us and watch it there. But I will not, I just, I'm not watching, I, mean, I just, I'm not going to watch it in these movie theaters anymore because it's just, it's bad in every sense of the word service, screens, people are just not nice. <laughs> like it's, it's, it's a lot of reasons to not go to any I, of these. Man, so. I remember, I remember 10 years ago, that's that you'd like, you'd love to go to the movies. Now yeah. it's just like, no, I don't want to leave my house. Well, I, I would go almost every few weeks. I actually paid. This reminds me. It was a great service. Had no reason of existing. Cause it, it was to get movie pass. You remember this? Alex? Yes, I do remember it that. T- it was $10 a month and you could see <laughs> however many movies you wanted. Terrible mm. business idea. Never do that. That was an awful decision to make, but God, God, did I make use of it. I literally would watch three three movies in a month mm. where prior yeah. I would never, I maybe would watch one every two months. But I was yep. just watching movies almost every weekend with, uh, not it, she wasn't my wife at the time, but my, currently my wife. And we just abused the shit out of movie pass. <laughs> it was awesome. And I remember every few weeks, Getting like the news article that Movie Pass <laughs> doesn't yeah, no, they'll I, make it another month, and they would I have remember, to slowly yeah. cut away. Like, all right, now you can only watch it on weekends. All right, now you can only do. And they slowly more stipulations came up, and eventually you're like, all right, this is dead, and you just you yeah. gave up on it. But that was a great. Six yeah, I remember every time I would ask like you and be like, "Hey, what are you doing this week?" He's like, "Hey, I'm going to the movies." I'm like, "Again?" Movie Pass, bro. Yeah. All you gotta do is buy some popcorn. And you're having a great time. Yeah. Oh, I missed that. I, I completely segued all of this to wherever I was in the last 20 minutes. Uh, uh, anything else you want to uh, bring up for your upcoming week before we get into the news? No, I mean, I've just been playing the Souls game again. I think I'm going to go back to Sekiro since I'd never finished that. Okay. And I want to be able to finish that because I got stuck and I just... That game is awful for me. <laughs> it's a it's a hard game. It, it's it's def- hard. It's definitely... It, it's... Yeah, it's definitely I have to like relearn. I feel like like with Sekiro because I I suck at parrying, so I never really do it in the Souls games. Well, it reminds me kind helped. of a, it kind of reminds me of Bloodborne except a little harder. Cuz with Bloodborne, yeah. I feel like it was a similar situation of like all right, this is completely different. We don't have shields. And mm-hmm. you can dodge with gun. <laughs> yeah, but but really you should be shooting things with your gun to stagger mm-hmm. them. It reminds me a lot of that, but in this one, it's imperative to the actual gameplay. Like, you need to learn to parry, and if you don't, mm-hmm. luck, you're going to die. Yep, and I'm eventually, I'm going to go back to that one. Um, just watch a guide. And, oh, yeah, yeah. Watch a guide. I'm, It'll help you through it. Um, uh, my boy Cowboy. Oh, always. Cowboy makes great guides. Just watch a guide. Watch yeah. his walkthrough. I'm sure he's got some magic. Oh, I'm sure. Magic. Under this rock, there's this secret tunnel that will give you a million <laughs> billion levels. Like, cool. All right. How and you, there's onion, bro. How did <laughs> <how'd> you find <laughs> this out, cowboy? What are you doing? Right. Uh, thank um, you, cowboy. 
what's it called though? But I also want to watch some shows and stuff like that. Um, we talked about it the other day. I'm actually really interested in now in not, uh, I'm watching Berserk because that looks like an interesting mm. show. So I want to try this. I want to dab into that. I want you to make sure you're mentally ready for that. <laughs> I mean, I feel like if I mentally, if I can mentally prepare myself for Souls games and Attack on Titan, I think I can get Berserk on my head. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. Rapid fire. Chief, this is the rapid fire for the week. Kind of lengthy today. Alex, like always, mm-hmm. every week, you stop me when you hear something interesting that you want to speak about. If not, I'm the one moving on. Okay. CD Projekt Red very recently. Uh, this is the, okay. I'm just, I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> CD Projekt Red just did this prior to recording about an uh, about thirty minutes ago. Released an image of their plans, so they had a kind of financial call, and they were basically explaining what their twenty twenty two plans are. And they released a little snippet of a picture, basically detailing these very things, and it reads as follows. Development work on Cyberpunk's twenty seventy seven expansion. Development work on the new Witcher Queen based on an Unreal Engine five, based in Unreal Engine 5. Further support for Cyberpunk 2077, development work on the next-gen version of Witcher 3, development work on the Molasses FUD, which, if you remember, they currently, or they recently purchased, um, on an unannounced project based in one of their franchises. Launch a spin... (laughs) I can't stop laughing when I read this. Launch a spin-off to Gwent, the Witcher card game. So you... It's very unclear. So you're doing a spin-off of Gwent? So is it going to be... So is it going to be a Gwent type card game like or is it going to be like a short story game for from who created the game Gwent in the game like it's like great, what is this great questions all around Alex right further <laughs> conceptual and research work on an unannounced projects now there was a tweet above this stating the following as it was mentioned in the CD Projekt Red's financial call moments ago, C- Cyberpunk's 2077 upcoming expansion will arrive in 2023. Please stay tuned for more details coming later this year. So, don't expect the expansion for I like another they, year. I like notice. how they're like, production plans for 2022, development work on the expansion, but it's going to come out for 2023. <laughs> it, it's shocking, really, how... <laughs> This is just still still happening. They're still this trying to fix the game. This game should be dead like Anthem. They, they, they're still trying to like release this expansion. Look, I, I'm glad that they're trying. But, wow. Like, it just it, like, it bothers me. I don't, I, think think it, I don't think it could be overstated how much they've been affected by, first off, releasing the game dead on arrival. And they knew it was dead. So, it's up to you if you even well, trust I them think anymore. It's, it's similar to the conversation we had la- uh, th- uh, last week uh, about like the like you no know, last gen does last gen uh, c- uh, you know versions of the games hurt the game or whatever. Right. Uh, in this case, I feel like it's like you know them keeping them keeping uh, to like they they keep working on Cyberpunk right. are hurting their other titles because yeah, they're not I- putting more it, like like Witcher Witcher three like next gen version. I feel like should have that should be priority it's yeah cyberpunk you already tried with that it's dead go go somewhere with that yeah that that does put you in a not only more conundrum but like financial conundrum do you try to fix yeah. it do you try to no man's sky this situation do you try to bring it back from the depths of death and regain trust that's a question they all can answer i if i was in their position i probably would try to regain their trust i don't want to abandon a game because that's what happened with anthem yeah. and how many people don't trust Bioware now because of that? I don't know. I can't answer that. Mm-hmm. I'll have to wait till the next game comes out. But it just worries me for the Witcher 3 Nixon version. Are they, is it even going to do anything to it? And then I'm just for future stuff. I'm like, is that even going to work now? Yeah, at this point, I just want a Witcher game. So I don't really yeah. care what they do. Like, yeah. Yeah, let's just work on Witcher. But hey, yeah. you guys keep going, I guess. <laughs> this is a quick one. Hideo Kojima is currently still working on something with Xbox. If you remember months ago now, we did have a release that they had a letter of intent based with Hideo Kojima and Xbox, basically meaning we may do something at some point. And it doesn't really mean a lot, but it means a lot if you think that, like, it means a lot because it's Hideo Kojima saying, yeah, I'm, you know, I might work with Xbox with something. And Jeff Grubb uh, highlighted it yet again, like, hey, I've recently heard that it's still happening um, on his recent podcast. 
and it's still going on so we don't really have nothing else to say just like we did prior um first off it's crazy that playstation even let him go i assume this is of his own volition like i i imagine playstation tried to purchase him exclusively and mm-hmm. it just he probably said no or they didn't offer enough money but shocking They're like if this actually happened if if xbox is able to release a game that says a hideo kojima project that's a that's a what if, big deal what if hideo kojima makes silent hills for xbox and this weird ass abandoned thing for playstation so he's, he's so he's doing both is what you're saying yeah that would be hilarious if I'm being honest, <laughs> like it would just kind of be funny. Uh, I would imagine if Abandon is an actual Silent Hill thing, I imagine that is Silent Hill, right? But I don't know. I don't know. I'm tired. Watch it be not even on PlayStation. It's be like, oh yeah, Abandon. It's actually oh, Silent yeah. Hills, and no, it's all gonna be on Xbox. It has to be on. There's no way they have a PlayStation app. Which I still can't. It doesn't do anything. No, it's got. We the... see a person's feet. <laughs> but it's gonna have the the demo. No, sorry, sorry. The prologue. Prologue, which is a full game, and you get trophies with a platinum. That's two hours long. Doesn't add up. And you pay for it. (laughs) Halo Master Chief Collection now has crossplay with Halo 3 and ODST. The update also adds Flood to the Firefight mode in ODST. What? What is the what? Oh, crossplay as it's... Crossplay. So, if you're on Halo 3 and you're on ODST... Uh-huh. You can play together in crossplay. So, like you, the multiplayer, no, no, like because no, 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 like so, with a... no, no, no. Sorry, I see what you're saying. Yeah. If I'm on Halo Three on Xbox One, okay, and you're on a Series S or X on Halo Three, we can play together. Got it. Yes. Okay. That's Does that make weird. sense? Okay. And PC. At first, I. And at like first, that. I thought at first I thought I was talking about the last gen versions, like the Halo Three 360 with Master oh, Chief Collection. No, 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 no. That was this is like, a recent what? update that that launched, I think, two days ago or something like that. Okay. Yeah. So if if you're on PC, it's Xbox One, Series S, X, you're playing three or ODST. Doesn't they're all together? You, you're all playing. Yeah. In, you're all playing. Okay. Together. That's what that, that means. Makes a sorry, more sense. I, That's how sorry. I wrote it a little incorrectly. I apologize, but that is what it means. It means crossplay is now it. available for both Halo Three and Halo Three ODST, and you can do the flood firefight mode, which I actually kind of want to try. I yeah, heard I saw it's the flood hard. firefight and it looks cool. Uh, this is a quick one because we don't have much. Bungie looks like they're hiring for an animated Destiny show. Uh, we know we've known that they're trying to make a show happen. Uh, if you remember back in I think February, they have like a multimedia like manager person working on ideas for shows and things so it looks like they are trying to float an idea of a show curious if they have something written up already or if this is to further develop the ip into a show if it's gonna be anthology who knows but all we know is seems that they're currently working on this show lest we forget the ceo of bungie (laughs) said there this is the beginning of a multimedia empire and i still can't believe that's a real thing that was said that a person wrote down and released to the public and no one makes fun of or talks about it no one talks about how strange that was this man wrote up a statement when he was purchased by playstation and ends it with this is the beginning of a multimedia empire as if this is some sort of disney channel like movie and he's the villain so so strange <laughs> uh but uh vicarious visions is now officially merged with Blizzard, so Vicarious Visions is now inside of Blizzard. Yay. It's got eaten yet again. They're going to be working on Call of Duty. Xbox owns, yeah. Xbox does own, not yet. They're working waiting on, on the it. deal working to be finalized, and yeah. there's still a chance that it doesn't get approved, which would be shocking. That's I don't think it won't. I do not think it won't, to be clear. Um, yeah. People much smarter than I have pointed out various issues, mm-hmm. but I do not think... At any point, this thing isn't going through. I just have no faith in any sort of monopolistic management, even if there was a fear of monopolies in this situation. Alex, that's the rapid fire for the show. So we actually have the news to get into. Uh oh. Now, what news have we got? There was a pretty big incident. You may have heard a loud shrieking and wailing outside at a random hour of the night about six to five days ago. 
So if you were walking maybe your animal or something at time, and maybe it was around 6 a.m. Eastern Standard, you might have heard just wailings, just strange wailings, almost phantom-like around the United States. That was all of the Kingdom Hearts fans. That was all of the Kingdom Hearts fans in, in sequence all at once exclaiming that Kingdom Hearts 4 is now officially announced. That was all of them, me included. I don't know, Alex, if you got the text, but I did. Between all the Kingdom Hearts fans that it's happened. So we all got up, we did our wail, mm-hmm. we screamed, and then we stopped. And I'm very excited yeah. to talk about Kingdom Hearts 4. Now, we got a debut trailer. Very similar to how Kingdom Hearts 3 was announced. With like a kind of... I mean, to be honest, kind of nothing trailer, but also like something to kind of like hint at what the game's though. about. So we did. I agree. We did get more this time, but also it does seem similar in the vein of this is like what it might kind of look like, right? I'm, I mean, we got this. We I feel like this trailer. I feel like it compares to the trailer that we got. When we were in for Kingdom Hearts 3, when we first saw Sora riding the, and we were in what was that Twilight Town when we saw, when he saw him riding the fucking wave of Heartless. Yeah, very that similar. Little I agree. So I it's, definitely so agree. It's like that. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. Now, again, that that kind of gave you an idea, but mm-hmm. not like a full on look at the game, right? Yeah, is my only point here. Now we're gonna talk over some stills. I would show it on the screen, but you know YouTube sucks, so we're not gonna do that. What I'm going to do, Alex, if you want to follow suit, is just bring up the trailer or we'll just briefly talk about some things that we want to point out. Uh, mainly, I want to point out, Alex, is mm. what's up with that menu? So if you don't know what I'm talking about in you didn't play Kingdom Hearts 3. So in Kingdom Hearts 3, it's very similar to Kingdom Hearts 2 in combat. The only difference is you had... What were they called, Alex? Where you summon st- flow motion? Where you summoned attractions mid combos? Oh, yeah. If you develop yeah. the combo like long enough, mm-hmm. so you'd make the combo. But instead of that s- type of approach, if you look at the menu, of course it's in Japanese right now, but people have decoded it. Mm. It says build bottom there, where summons or uh, drive mode would be in Kingdom Hearts Two. Mm-hmm. And Nomura was asked about what this might mean. Build apparently is something to do with destructing and rebuilding things. Now, this is going to get complicated, Alex. Stick with me. So, okay. the Yuzara fight in Kingdom Hearts 3, Remind DLC, gave you a sneak peek what I think what Kingdom Hearts 4's combat is going to be. Now, if you ever fought this gentleman, he's a fucking hard boss. My God, is he hard. What he does throughout the fight is he he has a weapon and is constantly changing the weapon. So it might be a bow. It might be like an axe. It might be like a thing that sucks you and takes all your items and things. It changes into various things. And what my hypothesis is here is you in some way will build weapons, maybe magic, something to the effect in the actual Kingdom Hearts 4 gameplay and weaponize them in some way. Where it be maybe like you suck in a fire attack and now your Keyblade is embedded with fire and you have extra fire damage. It's something to that. And if you also notice, there's a couple other things that you could point out in this trailer. There's really cool kind of almost flow motion type things where like when he jumps off of the building, he kind of like attaches to it. Alex, if you saw that, he kind of like magnetizes to it so maybe we'll have some sort of freestyle um parkour in this game similar to yeah. how we had the i don't remember what it's called but remember in, th- in three you could aim yourself and like float to it or something yeah 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 so it might have something to that effect maybe we'll have a spider-man like keyblade whipping action because he does show that he can whip around There's a grapple yeah so maybe there'll be grapple points that you can grapple to similar to like a spider-man yeah. situation um, but that's really what I wanted to point out, Alex. Is there anything from this trailer that you just want to talk about? Um, how do you, so there was a thing that people were already controversial on how he looks. 
Okay. Yeah, we can definitely talk my, about that. Yeah, so we so he like you know he looks more Final Fantasy ish and things like that. Let me get to the screen. And my thing with it is like I don't mind it because it's like okay maybe they're trying to get a new look which is okay. fine. Or I don't like how pretty it is. It's kind of weird. Or he's in an actual world and he's in a f- like in a Final Fantasy type world or if he's he's in some world and you know he his his appearance changes with that world. So and maybe that's why his face things. and his feet are not mungdo every anymore. They're, they're normal size shoes now. When I saw they showed his feet, I was like that's going to be the biggest thing out of this. Yeah, it's like his feet are normal thing. now. His people looking at the feet. Like that's you don't gonna got be the, the feet no more. Yeah, that's gonna that's gonna be the feet, or that's gonna be the thing. Like everyone's gonna be talking yeah. about the feet. Like as soon as I saw it, I was like, all right, here's mm. the, here's what the internet's gonna be talking about for the next two, three four days. Yeah. So I'm glad you brought it up because I actually forgot this was a problem with people. So mm. people brought this up as if like, hey, I hate that they're leaving an art style behind. I mm. understand what you're saying when you say that, right? You you're yeah. saying like, hey, you know. They had an art style, right? Why are we leaving that for this kind of realistic Final Fantasy look? I get you. My only point is... It seems to fit the world surrounding him. Exactly. One of the things that was very jarring about Pirates of the Caribbean's world in Kingdom Hearts 2 is that you are a cartoon man. (laughs) It's like a teenage boy sitting next to these... (laughs) <laughs> cgi generated people and it's jarring so yeah it was definitely weird so i i want to figure out is people's problem that the entirety of the game not game sorry of the trailer seems to be indicative of this exact art style and it's mm-hmm. matching or is it the entire art style changed and they just don't like that which i get both yeah. points uh, i also get that they probably want to play with unreal engine 5 Oh yeah, uh, quickly... we saw this in Unreal Engine 4. Yes, yeah, so this entire thing, Noir came out and said this was made in Unreal Engine 4, which clearly it was, because I, I don't even believe devs have 5 quite yet, like in full um, capacity. Don't know. Um, but 4 is currently, was used to make this trailer. They're mm. going to make the full game in 5, so the game is going to look probably even better. Than even this, better, which is wild yeah. to say. It's wild to say. So, I mean, I, I, I love the way everything I, looks like. The, I like the way it looks because, It fits again, him, too. Like, I like, f- like the way they changed f- it, like, him just, like, even the screenshot of him running towards the heart, the big Heartless, like, I, like, I could see the Kingdom Hearts, like, HUD, but then everything looks like, like, Final Fantasy-ish. It still kind of fits to it, and I like it. Look at his feet. And it's just no, yeah, right? Like, um, there's so much lore in all this it's annoying yeah like even like with the whole chick the redhead the chick, chick yeah we don't yeah. need to get into that but like but there's a bunch I will of say conspiracies his outfit he's, it... looks dope oh he yeah spoilers yeah, for Kingdom Hearts 3 by the way are you about to mention where he is kinda okay so yeah he's in so the place is called <laughs> Wadratum Alex is did I Wadratum Quack. Quadratum, yeah. Uh, yeah, quadratum. Like quadratum. It yeah. seems like the afterlife or our world or maybe something in between. Uh, well, I think for it's For achievers who don't know, yeah. and again, spoilers for three. I don't know who's out there really clamoring for, for three not it's to be spoiled. Three, it's been three years. So I think we're okay. <laughs> he dies at the end. Yeah. So this is maybe the afterlife. We were told that it was final. Obviously, it's not. Uh, we were told that once if he if he switches with Kyrie, he's gone. So maybe this is where he went. After that, maybe this is like final rest, or maybe this is where people who die in their world go. Because she does mention like this is this was a this was a wasteland kind of before. Like no one was here, but slowly people came, and it became a giant. Quadratum, like it became a huge mm. place. So maybe this just slowly becomes inhabited with dead people. Uh, I have no clue. It's, you think it's like a purgatory? Maybe. Maybe it's Kingdom I think, Hearts, I, and we don't I know. I think it's. I think it's. It, it's. It's pr- some type of. I must call it a dream world. And the only reason yeah. I call it that is because during the trailer, 
on one of the walls, like yeah, uh, if we it. go back to Dream Drop Distance, uh, there's two things. There's two words. There's D World or Dream World, yeah, or D Eater for Dream Eater, yeah. So and that was so that's why a lot of speculation saying is like, oh, he could, and that's why the chick is here, the redhead chick, because she's yeah. technically dead too. She's she died in the prequel mobile game. Yeah, it does. It definitely seems like they want this to look like the real world though, because this is a place yeah. in Tokyo, like this. Uh, yeah, I'm in sorry, Shibuya. not Tokyo. Yeah, sorry. In Japan, yeah, she's yeah, she, in she, they're in show. It looks like Shibuya, but this, I mean, it, I mean, I'm be real. It looks sick. I'm a we're Kingdom Hearts, huge Kingdom Hearts fan, huge. Yeah, we've played them all except the mobile game because fuck that. But I played we played awesome. a little bit, but we never stayed no, to it. It's way too long, way too long. Jesus Christ! But now the more important thing of all this, yes, we get a little picture. Of, or during the or we get a little so, uh, screen yeah, so shot. I was just to bring this up. So achievers, I'm actually going to get you the timestamp because you're not going to believe me, right? What I'm about so, to say, no one's going to yeah. believe. You're all going to say, "Haha, look at this Kingdom Hearts fuck boy. He's I, so I handsome." Thought, I thought they were just showing the world. You know, look at the floral. Look at everything. Look how yes. nice everything. The shadowing looks. But then so they this pan per- to yeah, like a little so river. A one. Yeah. Now you take so, over. So go to 33 seconds in the video if you're watching at home. Uh, and go to the Kingdom Hearts 4 reveal trailer, just the trailer. It's about three, three, minutes, 20, three minutes, 25 seconds long. Go to 33 seconds. You go to 33 seconds, you see a picture of a river. Like nothing, right? Internet sleuths and people who really know picked up a few things. So that's not even the most compelling thing about this. If you go to the very next second, 34 seconds, You'll see a riverbed with rocks, grass on the left. You'll see a very strange-looking rock, in quotes, top right of your screen. This is clearly an ATST foot. Now, if you don't know what that is, that is a Star Wars land vehicle. It is, I mean, people have literally circled it and put you it right next me. to an ATST. This is yeah. a Star Wars foot, or he is. Or we are getting mad baited right now, which I don't think is going to happen. But if you now use that as a point and compare everything coming before this, so the riverbed, later on the trees that they're showing, it looks exactly like Endor from episode uh, six. Mm-hmm. Like exactly. Like they used, to, like people were comparing stills from like Endor and things like. It, it it looks like they literally used the pictures and recreated it. Like it, it's almost mm. verbatim what it looks like. And then to add in, there's a literally an ATST foot. Now, I want to add in a couple things to kind of paint a picture here. We know for a fact, Kingdom Hearts three, the uh, Nomura did hint that he wanted to put things that he wasn't allowed to put in the game. Mm. He said so. When he was being interviewed, they made it clear that there are things that you just can't, you're not going to be able to add. We all know he was talking about Star Wars. We all know he was talking about Marvel Comics mostly. The reason that hasn't come in before is because apparently those things are under lock and key by Disney and they will just, they're just, they don't let people fuck with it. Now, yeah. you can make jokes about how the quality of the various movies they've released or the various TV shows that they've released since then. So that's kind of hilarious for them to say that. But jokes aside, Kingdom Hearts has a huge chance of this actually being really Star Wars because, Alex, and you know this, Disney has embraced Kingdom Hearts full force in the last few years. Yeah. S- to point out, like, they have had s- s- Kingdom Hearts, Donald, and Goofy in the parks. They've had merchandise. They've had, and, and th- uh, this sounds like little things, but Disney does not just let these things in. Like, they oh. had Donald Duck in his Kingdom Hearts outfit walking around in Disneyland once. Like, that's so a if, huge deal. Um, I don't know if you've seen it, but it was one of the recent episodes of the M- uh, Mickey Mouse or cartoon, the yeah, Minnie Mouse it's, cartoon. It's, it's Mickey, I think it's called Mickey it's Mouse. Minnie. Yeah, right. it's Minnie, it's Minnie Mouse holding a box. Yeah. And you can clearly see the key, uh, uh, Mickey's Keyblade. Sorcerer Mickey's hat, like literally, it's all in a box. But like, you see, clearly, you can see it's a Keyblade because it's just sticking out of the box. Yeah, clearly, and that's on the TV yeah. show. Yeah, I mean, they're embracing it full full force. Oh, for they sure. They know they can make money off us fucks because we'll just we just love it too much. Yeah. So, 
I do not put it past them to have figured out a way of putting Star Wars in this. Now, this oh, for sure. perfectly aligns with this art style. Maybe you don't even leave this world. Maybe it's portals or maybe it's maybe it's literally quadratum so like there's four areas and like maybe one area These stars, are all real world places but but like it follows a more quote quote unquote real world setting so like star wars is people like th those look like mm -hmm. people so maybe that's why they picked this very specific art style maybe they had to do this for to be able to incorporate marvel so who i don't i don't know but i know for a fact this is Star Wars, or he is mad baiting us? Because this is just, it still looks too much the same. It, it's, just, it's, it's not that it looks like it. It is it. it There's is no it. way. That's true. Like, it literally, is. I, mean, it is. I had, yeah, literally, I, I traced out the picture, and, like, you know the thing that you do? Uh, or I don't know if you ever did it, but, like, uh, for, to trace or whatever, you have a light behind the paper, and you try yeah. to trace the image or whatever? I even did that with it, and then just put it next to it, and I was like, okay, that's it. <laughs> yeah, like, it achievers like it can't be overstated like if you can find that there's a someone they put up i should have kept the tweet i, I don't have it anymore but they put up side by sides yeah. of like endor and that picture and it literally looks like they took that picture and made it in the game like it's wild yeah dude. fucking wild so we are probably getting star wars in kingdom hearts i don't i wouldn't put it past them to figure out a way to put marvel comics in there i don't know how they would uh to be honest that if it's just like an adventure situation or x-men or something who knows but we know that this Kingdom Hearts is definitely going to be different, not only in gameplay style with whatever build's going to turn out to be. Uh, we don't know too much aside from he's in Quadratum. It looks like a uh, master of masters if you've been following the stories involved in some way. And the setting could be indicative of something in Star Wars, Marvel Comics, or other things. Who knows? Alex, any lasting points that you want to bring up with the... Kingdom Hearts 4, because, mm -hmm. again, this is a pretty big deal. This was announced uh, as part of Kingdom Hearts' 20th anniversary that they were having in Japan. It looked really fun. I wish I could have went. Um, I saw a bunch of pictures. looked like everyone had a good time. Uh, Numaro gave an interview kind of detailing certain things. Obviously, you can't talk to anything about the story, but he just kind of yeah. highlighted, like, yeah, you know, this is. he gave some thoughts on things. You can look all those up. Nothing too crazy, in my opinion, that I want to cover the show, except for the build thing. I did want to cover that. Uh, mm -hmm. because it does seem like it might be an important part of the actual gameplay and how it changes. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm very excited. We'll, oh, see, I am. we'll see more throughout the next six to seven years when this eventually comes out. Very excited. I want, I want to know who Donald and Goofy are trying to look for. <sighs> Sora. Right? Do you, could it be Riku? No, Riku's alive. Yeah, but they're not, they're not in the Quadratum. Right, they're in the Underworld. That's, yeah, that's what it looks like. No, they are. They did like a uh, closed caption thing. Or no, sorry. They did a PR release. And okay. They, and they wrote out trailer. And it ends with Sora and Donald. And it says, are in the underworld searching for someone is what it says. Gotcha. So, so they do confirm it's the underworld. Obviously, it's Hades yelling at them. I'm, yeah. I assume they're going to to there to see if they can find Sora's soul or something. Maybe. Uh, I don't know. And also be curious to see how that works in the story. Like, is this going to be a solo Sora adventure? I doubt it. Nah. Uh, maybe it will be a like pick up from Sora, then you go to Riku, then you go back to him. I don't know. But I, I hope it's a dream drop distance situation where you're swapping in between them. Like that was a really yeah, cool yeah. idea that people kind of shed on, but I really liked it. I yeah. liked it, but I didn't like it when it was timed. Get, I, like, I get like, that. No, I get that. Like, like I don't want to be in the middle of the mission or do or doing something, and then it cuts off. Like, let me do this whole area first, and then story wise, I'm like, okay, now we're switching to this person. That's better to me no, than yeah. me in mid combo, and I don't know where switched. <laughs> no, I definitely, I definitely get that criticism for sure. Um, yeah. People just didn't like the actual transition period oh i didn't mind that at all but, that I, part I, but I do understand people saying like why is it time <laughs> and yeah. that just seems like a weird number thing because i don't know why it's timed either to be honest yeah i actually liked it i don't know why i liked that it was mm. timed. don't know why i liked the dynamic 
All right, I'm I'm with Sora. Let's you know. Oh, okay. All right, I'm about to switch. Let me go do this. And oh, okay, I'm I'm over. I'm reconnecting. You know, I don't know why, but I I actually enjoy. It. Mm-hmm. I understand why people wouldn't because it's a little weird. One more thing. How long Please. do you think it's been? Because Them? if you uh, be, because if you go back to the well, I'm not gonna spoil what the ending is. Uh, for Kingdom Hearts three, there's a secret ending where you get a, a yes. certain cutscene. In that cutscene, Sora looks younger than what he does now. So, how long do you think it's been? A couple of years? Do you think it's it doesn't matter? Do you? Th- it's just. I want to say time has passed, but Kingdom Hearts doesn't necessarily care about things like that. So yeah. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised if they don't even mention it, and you have to guess, and you're like, because in the trailer, they, or, or the or new in the new trailer, they just said you, you've been asleep for what was it like a seven a couple days or something like that. Yes. I think it's. I think she said seven days. Oh, you've been you've been out for seven days, something like that. Yeah, that sounds right. And the, and oh, and and to add, this is the beginning of the Lost Master arc, is what it's called. Lost Master arc. So of course, this is the that was the end of the Dark Saga or whatever it was called in the previous mm-hmm. one. This is now the La- Wasn't Lost. Wasn't it this Xehanort Master. Saga or something like that? I think so. I think, I think yeah, it I think it's Xehanort Saga. Yeah. So this is a completely new arc about mm-hmm. someone else. Can't wait. Can't wait. We'll see. We'll more, see more, more again. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. over the next six to seven years, I'm sure we'll get plenty of information about this. Um, and also, just a funny little thing for you: they actually, uh, Nomura actually wanted to call it Verum Rex, which, if you remember, this is the in-game uh, name for a video game inside of <clears throat> Kingdom Hearts Three, inside of the Toy Story world, <laughs> and it was called Verum Rex. That looked like mm-hmm. Yazora. Who is who you fight at the end that you, I guess, is in Quadrum, and that's his world. Mm-hmm. It's all very confusing. But as far as I understand, uh, they wanted to call it Verum Rex, but he realized that probably no one would know that it was Kingdom Hearts 4. So he just called it Kingdom Hearts 4. <laughs> so he's just like, all right, it's Kingdom Hearts 4. But apparently people in-house still call it Verum Rex, which is strange. But Interesting. We'll see what that comes from. We'll see. Certain Affinity made a social post. And this is the people who have helped Halo throughout the years doing various projects. They've also helped with other projects I'll be covering in the write-up. So, Certain Affinity has made a social post affirming that they will be working with 343 to improve Halo Infinite. This is the post reads. Well, we've been part of the Halo franchise for more than 15 years, and we're honored to say that we're deepening our relationship with 343 and have been entrusted with further evolving Halo Infinite in some new and exciting ways. Join us on our journey. Quote. So then they also gave us a, a little link to the uh, careers listing that they had. So they're actually hiring and they're going to help with Halo Infinite. Uh, certain Affinity does have quite the history with Halo. Founded by an ex-Bungie employee, Max Hoberf- Hoberf- Hoberman? Jesus. In December 2006, they worked on numerous titles like porting Halo uh, Left 4 Dead to xbox 360 but sticking with halo they worked on numerous projects like map support and creation assisting they helped with halo 5's halo 5's forge mode and they remade a, um, a couple of the maps in halo 2's remade maps that they released as well so they've basically been a support studio for their multiplayer mode for essentially since they were created uh, and they've been bouncing back and forth with other projects like they worked with i believe call of duty ghosts with multiplayer uh uh maps as well and things of that uh, nature but alex so we're seeing a uh certain affinity promise that they're gonna try and help out with halo infinite i imagine they got a big old sum to try and fix whatever is going on over there in 343 land what do you make out of all this do you think this will help (laughs) do you do you think this is kind of a cry for help from 343 side uh because uh i don't think anyone really stuck with halo infinite at all I, I would no, be shocked I, if their player base is abysmal. Yeah, they were, there's, they definitely need some help because they're like these, uh, like the season didn't like. I guess even after when the season started, it didn't right. keep anybody. So you're, so I guess they're trying to look be like, okay, what can we do to bring people back? Yeah, they definitely have that's what issues, gonna, right? Yeah. So I'm hoping this, this season two will be better. But um, yeah, hopefully there will be certain affinity will be helping them to achieve more, like more than just seasons. Maybe more. Maybe uh, do you think Halo Infinite will ever get DLC or? Well, they're getting two new maps in the new season. They're getting okay. a couple new modes as well. The the 
the bad part about all this is they basically released with almost no content, right? If you remember the release, there's still no co-op or forge. Correct. Yeah, they they're still gonna they still yeah they basically told us we need another like year to make co-op campaign and forge. Yeah. So whenever that comes out, we'll see that. Now. Yeah, we were supposed to be getting one of them in June. At they, least because yeah, they, they said six months. They had to delay. Yeah. Shocking. Yeah. Right. Now, speaking of the the three for three situation, yeah. So if you remember, they, they their launch was just abysmal in a content uh, point of view. So I I mean I had a great time with the game. It just didn't have enough content to feel. Now I don't know if there's an achiever out there that disagrees with this, but when they launched, they they you know they had a good bit of maps, but you can only do those things on like a random mode applier a certain amount of times. Their challenge mm. mode is still terrible. It's it's still awful. I don't know what I don't know who at three for three thinks that's how people play video games, but it's not. Uh, just random challenges that just come into effect whenever. Why aren't they all active at once? And you have to pay it's... to swap them. Like, what is going on with a couple of these choices? I just don't understand why they, frankly, fucked it up this bad. What? What? Did you not learn from Master Chief Collection? Like, I, I just don't understand. If anything, I, I feel like Master Chief Collection is doing better than this. Yeah, but that launched at a broken. Oh no, the, the launch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, we're, I'm comparing launches. Gotcha, gotcha. And I just, I hope, I hope they can get something going because it's, it's been a while, and I think the most we've gotten are two maps for the mode, one for big team battle, and oh no, sorry, I think it's three maps. I think it's two for the arena mode and one for big team battle, something like that. Regardless, that's just not enough content since launch. It launched in December. Uh, technically the end of November, and we're now in almost May, and they haven't got a m- lot of content. They had a couple special events with cosmetics, the Fiesta. They thing. had Fiesta, which you can only play so much of, like until you just are like, yeah. I can't. You do can this play anymore. like, yeah. You can, well, even then it was time limited. Is then I even it was like they cut they cut it. I think it was like the first week of a certain month, and then it came back in February. Yeah, what's up with that? Yeah, like it's like why it's not be active. the whole the whole day be like it, not, instead of being up for a month they 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 be like okay two weeks here and then two mo- and then a month later another two weeks here I'm like why just just make it a month and a half event that's all you got yeah and then you're done and then you got all your money and you're good to go I just don't understand they have they have successes to look at they have Apex Legends fuck's sakes they have fortnite to look at like they have things to look at to be like hey how do we garner a successful franchise and a successful starting off point with our multiplayer mode just look at apex look at these other examples that have have great like it has there's no excuse that the challenging modes is that bad like why are the challenges you get four at a time and then when you do one they give you one out of your other seven from the week and what is who? Why? There's so many little things like that. Dude, there's that so just... many times where I've skipped some of the the challenges just because I'm like, why are you giving me these dumb challenges? Like, I want to do the other one. There's nothing. I have nothing wrong with the challenge swaps. It's just why is it only four? Like active at a time. It just does. There's yeah. a lot of things that don't make sense. Also, if you remember, there was a uh, PR person. Uh, I think I mean, he might have been a lead on something. But they were saying like that the, that he would be surprised if anyone ever finished all the challenges. And it's like, what? There's none. There's not even that many. So there's definitely mm-hmm. a miscommunication between people because this is it's a mess. And I hope I hope this yeah. is like the beginning of Xbox going, hey, we got to fix this. Because how do you let Halo? How do you let Halo go? Like, I don't understand how that isn't the most polished game that you would have released in like 10 plus years. Like, how is that not the, that, I mean, it's Halo for God's sakes. It's Halo. How is it not the biggest release in years? It's like they released it and it just, it just, yeah, it, it flopped like a fish and it's, and it's over now and we wait until they fix it. Like it's, it's sad because I want I want Halo to be an Apex or a Fortnite where people are constantly playing and talking about it. Yeah, but they got to make that game before people do it. 
yeah, yeah. I was about to say, like, I, I don't hear anybody talking about it no more. No, it's a shame too. I, I wish, I wish it had an, uh, enough modes to talk about. Like, oh my God, we have a single player game being talked about every day of the last uh, like two months. Yeah, I mean, Elden Ring is almost lasted longer. I mean, it might have already lasted longer than Halo Infinite's oh. kind of. Oh, it has zeitgeist this discussion near AP. So yeah, I, I almost can't. And uh, disagree with you there, Alex. Lauren Landing appeared on a podcast called Xbox Expansion, and they got into his latest uh, release called Oddworld Soulstorm. If you remember, that's a game that debuted on PlayStation Plus uh, in uh, April of last year. And he goes to talk about PlayStation Plus and how it worked out for him. So, it, I really, I wanted to bring this up because he brings up PlayStation Plus as a both pro and con to his situation. And I thought it was an interesting look at how PlayStation Plus worked for them, but also didn't work in other aspects. So I'm going to read a quote from him. So, quote, it's kind of a double-edged sword. With Oddworld Showstorm, we were out of a necessity to get the project done. And we were hitting a number of late technical debt issues and talent issues. The games industry is emerging fast. Huge companies are paying devs fortunes. So it's harder to retain and harder to contract companies. And Sony was like, hey, why don't we do a deal? And the way we were working out the intention of doing the deal was that we would be free for a month on PlayStation Plus. COVID just completely kicked us in the gut. Every studio we were working with is going into lockdown and everyone's working from home. So no one could hand the controller to the person next to them. And that's how you build games. That's a long way of saying we needed the money from Sony to complete the project. So he gave a kind of lengthy statement over on, you can read the write-up on several sites. That's just a quick thing I grabbed uh, from his uh, perspective of giving him a basically no option. Like he had to basically t get PlayStation plus his money to keep going. Uh, he mentioned that he was trying to la launch in January and they missed it. They actually mm -hmm. missed their original uh, launch and they had to delay it. And that came up with Sony saying like, hey, we can make a deal here. And he goes on to say, like, he's not blaming anyone, but it was either, like, choose that or get fucked, basically. So he yeah. he chose that. He, he did bring up that, like, it did kill the actual sales of Oddworld, but he got the money up front to cover the expenses. So, you know, pro cons of the situation. I love Lauren Lanning. He's just a cool guy. I never played Oddworld, if I'm being honest, but. I was going to say, do you think this game would have done better if, 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 that, if this wasn't the case? No. Okay. Yeah. The only way it would have done better, and I can't... Uh, uh, attest to this personally but it could have done better only because there were so few games at the time on the ps5 i wouldn't have been shocked if they might have made more money than whatever playstation sold them i yeah. don't and, and we don't know how playstation pays their people uh I, apparently it's very heavily nda'd on how it works so no one talks about it even mm. privately to some people uh so people are terrified of speaking about it. so in, they're pretty heavily NDA'd if they ever say something they might get in big trouble so don't, we never hear how it about works it. <laughs> we never know how it works it's we don't not. know if it's based on how many people download it in the month they don't we don't know if it's somehow tied to subscription service who we have we just are guessing so yeah in i guess like the middle of the ground take of it like maybe it was based on how many downloads they got I imagine they would have made more money if it's based on, hey, how many downloads of the game while people are active PlayStation Plus members? We will cut that money into this amount of money we're already giving you. Because there is definitely an upfront payout. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious if there's anything behind that. Clearly, they probably were paid a pretty nice lump sum up front. They probably broke even on the project, I imagine. Maybe not, which that would suck if it didn't. But hopefully they broke even on the project and then all their sales is just butter at that point. And they also released it on Xbox not too long after that. So maybe they were able to recoup some of the costs then that they might have missed out on. Who knows? But I wanted to bring up it because it's the very few examples of people even mentioning PlayStation Plus in any sense of the word. Like just people just stay away from talking about Plus. And we got mm -hmm. Lauren Landing out here at least mentioning somehow a similar way of like he might it might have hurt him because people didn't buy the game they just plus who knows i would mm -hmm. love i would love to see the numbers one day maybe someone on the deathbed would go this is how playstation plus works and then he dies or something who knows uh and just some a little bit uh if you remember odd world debuted on playstation in 1997 and then soulstorm uh just came out april 6 2021 alex this is a weird one 
Mm. Epic announced that they finished a round of funding with some key investors to enhance their metaverse standings. This money comes from Sony and Kirkby. This uh, means Epic is continuing their hard push, and they basically gave an example that this is all fueling their metaverse uh, space and ideas and that such. Uh, which, in my uh, point of view, still seems unproven, to say the least, on whatever a metaverse even is. Alex, uh, we got not only further funding from Sony into Epic, into the future of whatever this metaverse thing is, we also saw some funding from Kirby, which the people who owed Lego, mm-hmm. which we saw them talk about that uh, last week with their metaverse children thing, and now we have this. Further talking about metaverses, do you think this is any indication on what we might see something soon, or is this Epic kind of hedging their bets and maybe future-proofing something to, if they see the metaverse cop off, they have some sort of standing? I was about to say, I think it's, I think they're doing something just to have in the back burner. So it's like if we, if they see anybody else do it, or have, or if that, or this whole metaverse thing picks up in this generation, they're like, oh, you know, we, we, we've been working on something. Yeah, we got something kind of like in the back burner. Yeah, that's kind of yeah. what I maybe thought. Like, I don't see Epic going, hey, we are going to really. I, I still, again, I still don't really understand what the metaverse is. I, I pretty, sh- I think you can have your own metaverse. So, whatever that is, maybe they have a metaverse thing that you go into that's independent or maybe connected to the whatever the fuck Facebook's doing. And they're just ready for when that happens. I'm curious why Sony themselves helped fund this. Uh, I'm curious if there's any kind of special deals worked out with that. Like, yeah, you know, we'll give you the money. Just we need X, Y, Z. And we'll definitely do that. You know, maybe some sort of agreement with uh, Unreal Engine 5 or something. Maybe. Who knows? I really maybe. don't. But I would love I would love to be on Flying the Wall when they wrote that deal up because you know there is wink and nods throughout that thing. Like, yeah, we'll, we'll do this. But uh, just remember, because even uh, Sony kind of put it in a very specific way. They put it as a we are happy this deepens our relationship with Epic Games. Like, they almost didn't even mention the metaverse thing at all. So here's a quote from uh, Kenichiro Yoshida. Quote, as a creative entertainment company, we are thrilled to invest in Epic to deepen our relationship in the metaverse field, a space where creators and users share their time, end quote. He goes on to say, we're also confident that Epic's expertise, including their powerful game engine, combined with Sony's technologies, will accelerate our various efforts, such as the development of new digital fan experiences in sports and our virtual production initiatives, end quote. Alex had to step away, so it's just me and you achievers right now, but that's an interesting thing at the end there, right? We'll accelerate our various efforts to make new digital fan experiences. Maybe this will, maybe this is Sony trying to catapult themselves into a sports concert-like event like Epic, I'm sure, is thinking about too with uh, some sort of metaverse thing. Like maybe they'll have PlayStation experience in the metaverse, which again sounds terrible. But maybe they'll do that. Maybe you think that ever some... come back? PlayStation Experience. Mm-hmm. It was a different Sony, I think. Um, now that E3 is dead, I think it's a different Sony that that threw the PlayStation Experience. I I do think there are people that appreciate PlayStation as a brand and a history, uh, because Astro Playroom clearly mm-hmm. had that yeah. uh, kind of soul in it. I just don't see this PlayStation making an experience. Like, I, I just don't see them going, yeah, let's have a fan event. Let's spend a lot of money to kind of just have fun. Like, that's all really experience was. Like, I'm, I'm sure they might have broke even. Yeah. Maybe they made a little bit of money off PlayStation experience. Yeah. But I imagine it wasn't the most profitable thing, or they would have kept doing it. So mm. I just don't see Jim Ryan going like, yeah, let's do PlayStation experience. Like, I don't see him th- giving two shits about that. So yeah. I, I I don't see that happening. Not I mean, I'm not saying the CEO has to sign off on anything, even though he I'm pretty sure he would have to sign off on a PlayStation experience. But uh, will they bring it back? Probably not. I I would love to do say anything. Yes. No, I mean they have state of plays, so I think that's what they see now. I think yeah. they are like, hey, we have state of plays for like uh, one twenty. Too many of them. Well, my my point is like we can do state of plays for one twentieth of the cost. You know what I mean? Like. 
there's like state of plays are probably just incredibly cheap to do in comparison to a fucking live event. Yeah. Um. So and also we're still kind of not sort of in COVID, but not really, but still are. Yeah. So people are still weirded out, you know. So even even then, you have to factor in like they don't want to make a big thing with a bunch of people yet, even though you know there's a couple other companies no, trying sure. to do it too. But I just don't think that they're they're even there yet. Yeah. And and I don't think that Sony cares, frankly. <laughs> Maybe I should say PlayStation. This is a quick one. I should have put this in rapid fire, but I don't know. We get to make fun of Mass Effect for a little bit. Mass Effect uh, officially uh, on a blog post said they are leaving pre-production and going against a game development. I hear my cat, by the way. Oh my yeah. God, it's hilarious. I think she's very upset that I'm not petting her right now. But yeah. uh, Mass Effect is leaving pre-production and going into early game development. I just, I really just got this. To- we got the story down. <laughs> so... I basically took this out just to be like, just as a reminder, this is nowhere near done. I just, yeah. just, just, just a reminder. Yeah. Don't expect this anytime soon. No, yeah. They just left pre pro. You do pre pro, like, before you even start making alpha. Like, before you even start building people, you start making fucking squares and like mm-hmm. blocks and stuff. They just finished. A, a, a story yeah basically that kind of said yeah that, that's a good way of putting it like they've pr- they've probably there there's going to be probably more side quest things and that being written out but they've essentially yeah. figured out the plot. A beginning and an end they probably yeah. have figured out like this is the story from beginning this is like middle this is act three like act one act two act three is probably like kind of ironed out and then kind of figured out mm. so we're gonna we'll hear about you. this game we'll for you. another five we'll years. You, uh, we'll see you. We'll see you in 2027. Wild to say. I'm curious if uh, we'll have a new Xbox thing to play it on. Like in uh, five years, yeah. No, but I'm curious if the new generation will have started by then. I don't think so. Um, but I'll be curious to see if we'll be playing it on Xbox Series W or whatever the fuck it's gonna be called. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Alex, we have date updates mm. for you. I can't wait for this, Alex. Euden Chronicles Rising will be available PC, PS5, PS4, Xbox Series X, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and will be on Xbox Game Pass on May 10th. Oh, my God, Alex. Less than a month away, I'm going to be able to play. It's not the full game, but it's like a... It's, it's almost like um, uh, the, the uh, Curse of the Moon to the... Uh, what's the game called? Made by the Castlevania creator. Um. Oh my God! Uh, you talking about? The, oh my God! Hold on. Yeah, you, you'll fi- you'll find it. But this is this is basically like the Blood of Moon, where they made the original Castlevania kind of game. Mm-hmm. Curse of the Moon, I think it's called Curse of the Moon. I can't remember. I get it confused with the actual game in Castlevania. I think it's called Curse of the Moon or whatever. But it was a dope kind of beginning part to play. So I can't uh, wait. For Bloodstained. This. Bloodstained. Thank you, Jesus. Bloodstained. Curse of the Moon. Yeah. Yes. Bloodstained. Curse of the Moon. There we go. Thank you. It's kind of like that. What that was to Bloodstain is what Eden Chronicle Rising is to Eden Chronicle. It's like a mm. kind of beginning to get your feet wet. And as a reminder, Eden Chronicle, Eden Chronicles Hundred Heroes is coming out twenty twenty three. Hopefully, it doesn't get delayed. It probably will, but if it doesn't, I'll be playing that next year. <laughs> Most anticipated game, probably. Yeah. April 14th, No Man's Sky is getting a Space Outlaw update. This will add Space Pirates and overhaul the space combat in the game. I thought that was kind of cool. So be, all the people playing No Man's Sky, or if you're interested, go back and play some No Man's Sky. April 14th, you'll be able to steal no ships Man's maybe Sky? or kill them all. Maybe you'll be able to murder people or steal their cargo. That should be Dude, fun. every time I jump on that game, I'm so confused on what to do. Like, I love it. How it's like Minecraft, is, right? But... You, don't, you don't do... Like, what do you want to do? It's what you do, right? I feel like Minecraft. It, well, Minecraft is a lot more simpler there. Oh, of course, of course. yes, it is, hundred percent. It definitely is. Well, probably not anymore. But uh, have you seen like the recent stuff? Like you can like, there's like magic. No, uh, yeah, no, the yeah, no, there's, yeah, there's a bunch of stuff. But like, I in comparison, I'm still saying you know, no, it's yeah, more complex. I'm just saying like. Minecraft's gotten pretty crazy too, but yeah, yeah. no, No Man's Sky. Yeah, no, I I remember trying to play it when it I came to Xbox. I can't understand anybody. 
Well, I remember going and playing on Xbox and just being like, this is cool. Not for me. And just yeah. it, just dipping out. Like, uh, this is a great game. I wish I wanted to play it. I don't, though. And like, I'll watch people play. I'll watch, I'll watch people play it because, like, even anytime I try to play, I go to the NPC and they're like, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, <laughs> what, are you, what are you talking? What are you saying? Blah, I'm, blah, like, blah. I'm like, I haven't been able to find anything to figure out, like, what you're saying. Bucks and Axe is heading to Game Pass as well as all Xbox platforms, April 28th. Alex, you get to play Buck Snacks. I played a little bit on PlayStation. I didn't at all, and I probably won't when it comes to this. But it, it'll be That's out there. Interesting. I, I think it's like my type of game. It's like, oh, it's it's cool, but not my type of game. Oh, and it will be coming to Switch as well, same day. Mm. Alex, Quake on twenty twenty two is going to be held April eighteenth through April twentieth yeah. on twenty twenty two. Congratulations! I know you're excited for that. Yeah. Saints Row is getting its own showcase on April twentieth. Be excited, I guess. Alex. Emmett Watkins Jr. asked me this a long time ago on his show. I'm going to be asking Uh-oh. you the same question. Uh-oh. What do you think of Saints Row? I feel like I, I feel like I can I I'm I I would not be hyping this game up because I don't want my I don't want to have over expectations. I want to go in there with a super low expectation. I basically agree with with what you're yeah, saying i, I have like I've, i have a bad feeling it's gonna I, not be good it's one of those things where like uh, it's like when you go to golf and you lick the finger and you just kind of put it in the air and the wind's going I that way like, like that's how that's I, how i feel with this game where like no one's talking about it because i, I and i feel like i'm the only one saying this like it doesn't you know what it reminds look me of? Good, anytime I look at right? anytime I anytime I look at it, I'm like, this is this is GTA Online with a hint of Far Cry for some reason. It just it's just like it's mm. a little bit a little hint of Far Cry, but pretty much it's they're trying to be too much like GTA. I'm gonna look up gameplay. I'm gonna look and up gameplay. Do we even Thanks. have gameplay? I don't even remember anymore. Not much. We're probably gonna see the most we've seen about it. Um, when that comes out, Let's see, yeah, like, I, I think the that. biggest thing we have is the Game Awards gameplay trailer. Hmm. Which that was four months ago. Yeah, Chevers, just look up the gameplay trailer for this. Like, I just did nothing. Nothing here. I'm, I'm like, oh my god, I can't wait like to do that. Yeah, I just, I do not see myself, like, being excited for this game. That guy had Wolverine claws. And maybe I'll get into it when I'm playing. That's what I'm saying. It does have the Saints Row thing I liked in Saints Row 2, which, like, there were factions, and you you got into, like, their storyline. And, like, mm. there were, like, consequences, like, when you played out the story that played out and things that I enjoyed. So I'm kind of hoping that's in this one, too. But I gotta say, like, just by looking at it, nothing screams, like, yeah, I can't wait to play this. It could just, it looks, oh, wow, he was on a hoverboard. All right, that looked kind of sick. <laughs> Whoa, what the hell? Um, Alex, you know this. What is a Dominic Toretto drive? A dom- what? Dominic oh, Toretto. A charger? Yeah, Dodge is the Dodge Charger, right? With the engine out. Yeah. So yeah. literally they had that car in a uh garage and they shot it and it like caught on fire and shot forward. That was wild. Oh. I I really hope I'm wrong. But every time I see the game, it just doesn't doesn't look great. Like it looks like a average game. Like it looks like a this is gonna come out, and people are gonna be like, Yeah, Saints Row. Anyways, what's coming out next? Like uh, that's why that's why I think it's gonna happen. Like it's gonna come out. People are gonna be like, "Yeah, it was fun." So like, when does Gotham Knights come out again? You, like it'll be like one of those things. Like when does this game come out? Like it just it. No one's gonna remember it. Like it's gonna come out. You're gonna play it, and it's like it's gone. Like it just it happened, and you just won't think about it again. Yeah, that's I don't know. I'm keeping my I'm keeping my expectations low, man, because it's like if I have fun with it, then that means I'm like awesome. But if it's it's bad, I'd be like, well, at least no, I'm not I'm not disappointed because yeah, I know that's true. That's true. And hey, maybe we should approach everything like that. Be wary of hype, everyone. 
It could ruin mm-hmm. things for you. Yep. Achievers, that's the news for the week. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, if you remember, I end the show just like I begin it with one singular question, Alex. That is, of course, what do you have queued up for the week? Now, this could be, of course, a game, a sort of comic, a book, TV show, a movie. This could be anything. Achievers, this isn't only for Alex. This is for you at home. This is for you to go into the comments and tell me what do you have queued up for your week? What are your plans? Are you going to play a certain video game that you've been waiting on? Maybe there's a TV show that you're just irking to listen to. Maybe watch. Maybe a podcast that you've kind of been delaying for the weekend so you can fully devote your time to it. Alex, mm. what do you have queued up for the week? Um, I need to watch today's episode of Halo. I'm going to keep watching it. Uh, I, I agree with everybody. <laughs> God, stop showing his face. It's <laughs> literally the last episode... The whole episode, he had his face. The whole episode. <laughs> I see this. I see this man with the suit on. No helmet. I'm like, bro, where's the helmet? I don't want to see your face. Like, dude, you're not but Master Chief, I, man. Like, like fucking now, put the no, helmet on. No, no, I think. It, I think this Halo. I think he's not Master Chief yet. I think he's still John trans- transitioning into the Master Chief. So I don't no, know thank because. You. Let's just let's just say that he, the Cortana didn't even doesn't even ex, didn't even exist yet in this beginning of this show. Oh wait, so like um later? Yes. Oh wow, okay. Yeah, so uh, I don't want to. Sp- I mean, am I spoiling episodes? Not spoiling, right, but okay. spoiling. Uh, slight spoilers for the Halo TV show. They, I know, okay. I know, you're really thriving to watch it okay. on Paramount Plus. Yeah, no, they they uh, they made or fully introduced Cortana in the last episode. Okay, yeah, I don't think. That's- yeah, I don't know. It was in the trailer, I guess. Yeah, everyone knows Katana's in the and let's show. Let's just say it has her voice and is like yeah, and, it's, and it's the, the same lady. Yeah, no, yeah, I just for I, for some reason I, I love Katana's face, voice, isn't it? Right? Mm-mm. No, is a different person. Like it's the it's a it's different the, person, but the same voice. Yes, it's okay. the person that plays Halsey. It's her face, but with Cortana, the original Cortana's face or voice. Okay, that's kind of cool. But I, like, it was just cool because she was like, "Hello, Master Chief." I'm Cortana, and I'm like, oh, okay, that sounded cool. That's yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, Achievers, if you really want us to make make content about the show, let me know, and I I'll sit down and watch it. But Little it doesn't reacts. seem like anyone gives a shit about this show, so I feel like there's. I'm watching it just just to watch it because no, I'm I know. in. A, I'm, it's yeah. your thing, right? You're kind of you're yeah. the TV show guy, right? Yeah. I see. I see it. I, I see why you're yeah. watching it. I it doesn't sound like it's so bad. Like you're like. I'm not watching. No, no, so. no, no. I've had shows where like I'm not watching this. This is bad. <laughs> no, no. This is this has been. It's it's entertaining. Let's just say it's. It, I I like. I, I want to see where it's going because it seems to be like a. It's a whole new like story because I don't I have no idea what the fuck's going on. Also, Chief, you're sorry. I had to walk away there. My cats were literally screaming at the door and it was distracting. So I just. I no, you're, I you're, opened you're, the door. They've shut the fuck up. So like now they're just being cats and walking around. They're like, they're like, what the fuck are you doing in here, dude? I, I like, she was wailing. Oh, there's a zoo you could see, like, right, right there. Yep. There, uh, one of my cats was just wailing at the door. I'm like, I know when I open this, it'll all stop, and it's annoying because they're Look. just doing it. Because I, I guess they're, I don't know why they do it. Maybe they're like, what are you doing in there, drugs? Like, a, it's like a, it's like a parent, like knocking oh, no, on the door when you have it locked. Like, what are you doing in there? Oh, no, I, I put my dogs outside and they're like, let me in. That's why you keep <laughs> seeing me slide to the side. And now they're like, they're, they're all asleep now. Like, look at that. They're all asleep. Oh, they got their own little beds over there. It's adorable. Yep. Yeah, they're, they're asleep. They're like, okay, leave, we'll leave you alone now. I'm like, thank God. Um, but no, I'm gonna play. I'm gonna watch the show. I'm gonna. I might, like I said, I might start Berserk. I don't know yet. You um, did say you had an interest in a thousanding a couple Dark Souls. How are we yes. feeling on that? So I definitely do want to try that because I am needing the second. Play- I'm on my second play for Dark Souls Remastered, and since you're playing it, I'm probably playing with you so I can get the the second ending. And then I'll try my best to get as many as I can. I don't know if I can a thousand all of these, but I'm definitely going to try because I have a thousand Elden Ring, and I've Platinum Bloodborne, and uh, I just I'm trying for Dark Souls three. I think I could do it. Don't know though because I just found out there's an achievement for getting all the rings. And do you want to know how many rings there are in this game for Dark Souls three? Yes. 
Let, let me um, rephrase. Let me remind you. You know, you know how you can play New Game Plus and everything. Those rings count. Wait, so there's, so there's different a, rings. There's a pl- there's a plus one, oh, a plus two. That's right. In New Game Plus, so you have to get to I think, what is it? New Game Plus Seven. No I don't remember. Way. There, there's a hundred and seven rings. No way. So you have to. You have to play New Game Plus and plus plus to get most of the rings because there's there's a have a ring plus one or a plus two like you get extra an extra one it's wild mm, i looked up a list for all wait, the rings no but you, but for to get the achievement you have, you have to, to get all those rings and play new game plus t- at least three times i think so you have to beat the game four times possibly or, okay okay so you don't know for sure how many times you just know you just it's know- like when I was looking at the list of the of the rings, it okay. said to get this ring you need to play New Game Plus. To get this other ring, or it's because it's it's a Havel ring plus two or something like that, you have to play New Game Plus. The journey, the third so that's one. a yeah, journey the third three. one. That's a journey three. Yeah, to get all of those, and there's a total of 107 rings. I was like, I don't know if I could do that. Wow, that. How many rings are there? How is getting in all the Dark rings Souls? the hardest achievement in a Dark Souls game? That's kind of stupid. <laughs> right? Uh, I didn't know the see. pluses counted. That's How many rings are in Dark stupid. Souls 3? Rings are in... Yeah, it's 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 a little ridiculous. Yeah, that's yeah. That unless I'm unless I'm just talking out of my ass and I read something really wrong or maybe that's those are optional. But I could have swore that's. Can, I, I can't you look up that. how to get ring like ring achievement? Oh no! Dark the, Souls tro- 3. the trophy or achievement may be glitching. Despite having all 107 rings in your inventory, it may not register. In this case, <laughs> drop 15 rings, then pick them up again, then drop a different 15 rings, and then pick them up again. Do so this just until keep it dropping registers. them to see uh, yeah when it registers. Do not drop. Any more than fifteen to be safe. No, the game you are only not, allows thirty. You're not wrong. I, the most long-winded task in the game: find all a hundred and seven rings with plus one, plus two, and plus three versions only available of, in of New Game ring. Plus and New Game Plus Plus. So yep. on a journey three, it looks like you'll be done. Once you've got the plus three version of that ring, there is no in-game benefit of picking up a plus two or plus three. Yeah. So, yeah. So there's a pretty much a plus three of each of each ring. Oh my god. Yeah, there yeah, see like the life ring. There's a plus one version for me and plus. Oh and, oh, and they're all in different locations. So for this one, let's say life ring. And the the plus one version in New Game Plus is located in the Undead Settlement behind Sieg uh, which is Onion Bro. Uh and the plus two version in New Game it says New Game Plus. So there's two versions of this that w- that's in Lothric Castle. And then there's a plus three version, which is a new game plus plus, which is in the, in the untented grave behind the Holy King Lothric. So they're in different ver- they're in different locations in every in every version. How to ruin what? how to ruin an achievement list. The Chlorinthy ring. I don't think we I don't, I, you need the DLC. No. It says the plus it says plus three version, the ringed city. That's the ringed city is the DLC. So I'm assuming that's not needed. That can't then no. Because so I'm assuming that you only need a, up to plus is, two. Well is this added? Was this added? Uh-huh. No, there's a total of a thousand points. Yeah. There's no way it. that's that's added because they because the DLC didn't launch with Dark Souls 3. Yeah, it so didn't. I assume I don't think so. This no, is I don't confusing. think so. Yeah, a lot of the plus three rings are in, are in the ring, or the plus threes, yeah, are in the ring city. And so the apparently the painting of Arian does is, is here too. Man, there's so much. The rings, yeah, Dark Souls 3, not doing that. So yeah, probably not yeah, a thousand that, that one. That's an easy way of ruining a list right there. That That is a hilarious way of just yeah. ruining, ruining it. Oh my God, wow, that is incredible. Like yeah. that, that just goes to show you. Like, put thought Why? into your achievement lists. Like, who who sat there and went? Like, this is I can reasonable. See if to you get ask. all the if you get all the rings in your first playthrough. Yeah, cool. Yeah. cool. 
if you want a sec if you want you can you can get versions two and three to put but don't make that the achievement yeah don't make the achievement like you did you did good enough when you did it the first time like ah oh, that no thank you yeah right now i'm missing 10 achievements in dark souls 3 and that's more, and for sure one of them but i need all the sorceries pyromancies miracles rings and gestures and then the t- and then two more secret endings and that's it so yeah it's just oh my god uh by the way what i have queued up and i i kind of went over that at the beginning of the show i want to watch mm-hmm. uh, peacemaker i want to watch um I, I recently watched don't look up that was a great movie very okay. much enjoyed that uh, i do recommend that if you guys have netflix a quick shout out uh, upload on prime video watch that it's that's awesome show upload Okay. It has Rob. It has Robbie Amell. Okay. Um, so it's pretty much the it's when you the the base of the show it's it's in the trailer so it's not really a spoiler. Okay. When you when you die, you you don't really you don't go to heaven. You can get uploaded to your own. Oh, heaven. I feel like I remember hearing. About yeah, this. your consciousness gets uploaded to a virtual, uh, heaven, and I see it. And then yeah, and then shit starts happening, and like, it's it's crazy. It's pretty funny show too. Okay, that reminds me of um. Everyone's saying the succession is really good. I think that's on Amazon. I kind of want to watch that. Interesting. Um, okay. I don't know. I don't remember the premise. Is that is that the show? I think that's the show where um, you go to work, but part of agreeing to work, your memory is wiped. So when you clock into work, or sorry, when you clock out of work, the time you were there at work is taken away. Whoa. So no one knows what they do there. Um, I think that's the premise for Succession. Let me see. Because that's, because whatever that show is. Mm-hmm. No, this is not it. I can't okay, even so find this my is a different one. Achievements. <laughs> this is a different one. Succession is apparently about a, a big a company sta- stands down. A, a huge head of a company stands down, and like someone has to take over. What is a show about? All right, Using while working. I'm gonna get this, and then we'll sign off today, achievers. I just I want to say this just in case someone's like interested. Show. Yeah. That's an awful way of trying to look that up. <laughs> Severance. Apple TV. I don't have Apple TV, so I can't watch this, but it maybe at some point I will, and I'll watch the show. But, uh, mm. yeah. Yeah, Mark leads a... T- oh, okay. Mark leads a team of office workers whose memories have been surgically divided between their work and personal lives. When a mysterious colleague appears outside of work, it begins a journey to discover the truth about their jobs. It's pretty cool. Interesting. <laughs> Gotta be honest. It sounds pretty cool. I kind of want to watch that. If I'm being yeah. honest. That sounds cool. Uh, but Achievers, we've been keeping you here long enough. Thank you so much for joining us today. We, of course, will see you next Friday, like we always do. Remember, support us. Leave a comment. Like the video. Subscribe. Click the notification bell. Any of that will help. Do one or all of those things. YouTube service, or sorry, podcast service. Five star review. Uh, patreon.com if you want to support us financially thank you so much for listening and remember go chief go chief